me? Yeah. So. Hello, um, I'm Salman Najam, um, artist, painter, sculptor from the Kingdom of Bahrain. VIP lounge for the ratchet holes yeah. Them boy talking about trapping holes yeah. Fuck boys probably still jacking foes yeah. Um, in my work, I strongly try to shed light on issues that are usually shied away from. Um, things like places we know of but necess not necessarily want to go to. Just like uh, Albert Camus' perspective on the claim that, um, that we are free enough to know that we are in, cage, in a cage but do not have enough freedom to escape it. I do believe I don't have enough power or authority to be able to make people get out of this cage, but I do give myself enough authority and power to believe that I have the ability to show the viewers of my work the cage and allow them to conduct their own strategies to escape from the setup cage. I personally choose to escape this cage by understanding, the, understanding then rejecting the norms of generic society. Um, I relate to, nihil to the nihilistic philosophy uh, that there isn't anything I have to do and there isn't anything I'm required to do. I have a choice in acting the way I'd want to act um, through an authentic device strategy that I come up with in my own head. Um, I try to translate I try to translate that in, um, in my work by not abiding to a present model when creating art, uh, by not putting too much initial thought into how my art would be conveyed and received, also, um, I'm gifted enough since, um, since my childhood to have the ability to let my hand um, do the thinking for me and freely come up with drawings for me that are based on emotions, thoughts, beliefs um, that dwell deep within my subconscious mind. Uh, when I select one of these many drawings which I, make, which I often make, um, I select the ones I like. Uh, they're granted access to be taken forward into a painting uh, I would be a liar if I said I understand the exact reason for the drawings and why I make them. Through, uh, though more often than not, I do gain a clearer understanding of what I am trying to say to myself through the aid of color in the form of emulsion, house paint, graphite, oil bar, and spray paint. Um, this is a drawing I made when I, when I was seven years old in 1999. Um, it loosely kind of shows um, my approach in, um, in, in art and, and painting, which hasn't really um, changed a lot. Um, the sy symbolism still exists. Um, the mark making is somewhat similar. And uh, here, and as always, I'm portraying the things I like the way I like portraying them. Um, as cliche as this, as this might sound, I do believe that art is a collaborative act between man and God, and the less man, the better. Um, so I do so by removing my, my conscious mind from my work um, and allowing myself to come up with, with subconscious doodles or, or drawings which I then translate into my work. Um, so, speaking of the word cliché, throughout my uh, time in art school, the word cliché has been thrown at me a few times, mostly in a derogatory way, 
Um, however, it is something I embrace and work with. Uh, I find that cliches are powerful tools in conveying the surface of themes, clearly, directly, and to the pointly. Um, I mostly find that I cannot move away from them, even when I try. Um, I do relate to Tal R's claim uh, when he said, uh, saying the color of love is red is stupid, but it is also exactly right. Uh, me and him might be dead wrong for thinking this way, but uh, this is this is how uh, this is how I feel like um, my son my, my uh, sonic and mental language is um, constructed. It might be because of of my influence and uh, that I am a product of post-internet Disney culture, which uh, kind of embedded these cliches in my mind from childhood when they portray, for example, when they portray villains in black and uh, purple and the heroes in. Uh, white and orange. So, um, so, uh, so through the evaluation and my attempts to understand my paintings, I was able to um, divide my work and the themes that I work on into, into these few slides. And I will start with the, the human condition. Um, the first, uh, the human experience that propels me into thinking about the reason for our existence and how we deal with what we have is shown in, in, in these um, uh, paintings that fall under the human condition theme. And the painting Hot Mess, the one on the left, I, um, it was a way for me to understand consumerism and uh, the exterior that considered to be beautiful through luxury and uh, designer goods. This can be seen in the uh, in the skull on the right, that um, you know, that is um, that is almost a symbol of myself because uh, I do have the same glasses and I do wear the same ones, and uh, they won't really do me much when I'm uh, dead. But um, 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 and yeah, and the tongues and the sexy ladies outline are meant to. Uh, um, symbolize uh, hu human human desires, um, sexual desires. I mean, uh, the other painting, paranoia, is, is an even wilder, all-out attack on myself. Where um, this was the early stages when I was questioning who I was and where I fall in society compared to what society wants me to be and the way I am. And uh, because I wasn't really didn't have a full understanding of who I was and really what I was. I, uh, I um, associate myself with the figure in the middle and consider that to be the self-portrait rather than the clearer image of myself on the left um, to convey that um, you know, there are a lot of parts that are missing and still haven't accumulated. Um, also, I, um, um, I don't have the slightest clue um, why the hell I painted oranges and uh, wrote the word orange and crossed it out on the bottom. Um, these kind of show the... Um, the subconscious, uh, I do get some of them, and, but, I do, but, I, but I don't get all of them. Um, I also try to find refuge in my land, my culture, my country, um, which is something important, precious, and dear to me. Um, but when I was looking at my culture and tried to study it to, uh, to aid my work and aid my understanding of myself and my surroundings, I could only see the things I wanted to change which is a good way of saying I only saw the bad things. So in the, left, uh, in the, le the painting on the left, Gloria, Arabia, Gloria of Arabia, it is meant to um, you know, discuss, symbolize um, how, how my f fellow Arabs were too concerned and preoccupied with mortal desires in the form of social status, um, show, and luxury, uh, to the point where these, moral, these mortal weaknesses started to engulf and define the culture. The painting on the right acts as a Pie, di uh, pie graph um, showing the slice that has been eaten away, uh, a slice of the culture that has been eaten away, and then showing the other remaining side to be tainted. tainted. So when I'm not looking for answers uh, from culture, I try to find the answers in the eyes or the heart of someone other than myself. So, uh, but as you can, you should clearly see through the frustration in the work and the titles, which are a very integral part of the work, or all, all of my works. The reason I put the word persistency in the title of the slide is to link the frustration that comes with my inability to find what I want, um, 
but that did not show me or stop me from persisting and continuing to look in the same place. This can be shown by the repetitiveness of the strokes in Love Never Felt So Good, and uh, the lines and the etching and scribbles in Boats, ag Boats Against the Current. Also, the metaphor attributed to the migrating flamingos is meant to symbolize the back and forthness, going back and going, going and coming to the same place. And the outline of the skull is meant to symbolize the, t the long time I'm willing uh, to continue doing so. So after that, in my work, I tried to, I, I said, maybe God is the way forth. Maybe religion is going to quench the thirst for the thing I don't know what is but want. Uh, these paintings are aimed to be a model for myself and uh, those who agree with me, choose to agree with me, uh, for how to live your life or life through religion and faith. So, um, I tried, I, I tried, w when, I, when I was at this stage of my uh, artistic practice, I kind of tried to redirect my thinking and, and, and look deeper and find different ways of finding this thing that I want. So I thought I could do so by, by increasing the, um, um, the initial kind of um, approach of subconsciousness, but also link it, into, link it to my interest in spirituality and religion. So I started um, looking at the sublime. So thinking about God too much has, translate, has uh, transcended me into a place where I try to envision him, his energy, or light. But by trying to understand him, or the nature and essence of God, um, only made me try to paint cliche symbols of God, but not God. So I continue looking for what I want, and then after I tried um, after I tried looking for it outside, I tried looking for it on the inside, and found this. <laughs> Overall, my work is fueled by rage, energy, and intensity. That is something deep inside, but easily brought to the outside. Intensity, rage, and energy is easily expressed. All you have to do is that, or something like it. Uh, as, a, as opposed to any other emotion that has to be shown and portrayed through words, actions, and, and, and various explanations, rage, intensity, energy, or whatever you want to call that feeling there, um, allowed me to hit my paintings and drawings head-on more often than not through the application of paint or mark, mark making by allowing the paint to flow densely, thickly and freely on the canvas. I scribble, I scribble, in, a, I scribble in a way to express a sudden burst of energy I get um, that I feel I need to let out. I'm also interested in the physical act that gives me great pleasure when my arms tense and harden as I scribble on canvas or the feeling of sweat I work up when I run hastily from one bucket to another to apply wet paint. Um, these actions make me feel the way I want to feel. That is alive. And uh, currently in my practice, um, I try, as I said earlier, I try to find what I was looking for inside rather than outside. Uh, I diverted my view to the inside um, to find meaning in the thing I don't know what is but want to know. So I tried do doing that by removing a tool that aided me throughout my practice, which was color. Um, I eliminated color to limit my vocabulary and ease myself into replying to the question I have with a well-constructed short sentence, rather than in the form of uh, you know, stacks of paper that resemble a novel that have, has its pages shuffled. So, um, 
So I find, I, find, um, I, I try to do so um, in themes I find important uh, by reacting to the events, truths uh, that, I, that I'm sensitive towards, like the clip I showed in the beginning. Um, even though using only the color black, uh, primarily only using the color black limits myself to uh, primarily one color, black means much more than it is. To me, black is solid yet fluid, flat yet deep, everything and also nothing. Black is obsolete yet is necessary. Black is the beginning, blackened is the end. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? comments Thank you. How come you didn't talk more about uh, Metallica? Because isn't the, the last quote, that's a Metallica quote, right? Yep. <coughs> yeah. So I'm like, that's kind of big. I don't know, it just seems like there should be like, it's like Kierkegaard and like Watts and you know, all these like, but it's like, you talk with Metallica way more than like any of the other stuff. Like that's really like, and that's kind of like an interesting, element to all this is like where that comes in with the, this kind of polarizing thing. I don't know, and that seems like a much more of like a foundation of like what you're drawing from than, than other stuff. It just seems like a necessary bit to like really reference. Yeah, my, I, I agree completely, but I feel like there's a kind of link between the quotes I've shown and uh, the existentialists and, um, and Metallica, because in a way they kind of convey and speak about the same thing but it's just the approach that is different. And uh, um, it's the same thing that happens with the imbalance and kind of the polarity of my work where I have, you know, the black and then the colorful and then the, the, the two ends of the spectrum. So I kind of feel like the Metallica and the existentialist are kind of the same thing, but they're different sides of, uh, different sides of the same coin maybe. Yeah. What, what's that about? Yeah, so... Well, we know the answer. But there for, that's a, just a, a very good example of it's being a, careful not to leave something yeah. un, unspoken for. Uh, I, did, I did so on... I, I had a slide prepared just for it, but um, then I removed it because it's becoming a taboo subject within myself because I'm kind of dangling and uh, teetering on, on, on understanding if I, if I should keep it or remove it. The yellow line that you can see that runs throughout almost all of my paintings um, is my signature. It's how I sign my work, how I end my work. It's kind of like how I write my name on my, pa on my painting. But when I did that painting, it kind of broke away from everything, from the structure I've, I've had because of it, because it's so foreign to what I do. I couldn't see this on it, which then, um, which, which then inspired later work to not have the signature. But I am, you know, I've, I've been thinking about this since the time I made this painting, which is back in, I think it was, um, November or something to now, but I've been creating work while still thinking about this and not gaining an answer. I'm kind of teetering between uh, knowing if I should 
keep the line or remove it in um, in uh, in future works. So uh, yeah, that's a question I still haven't answered. Uh, these paintings still might be hit with that yellow line, but uh, but we're gonna have. I'm I'm going to have to see about it. And the reason why, the reason why it is a yellow line is um, when I was a child, I, I kind of thought about how one associate, one how one associates himself uh, during childhood. Um, I used to remember as a child that um, your favorite color would, in a way, define you. Um, it was it was that in in our household in our household where me and my brothers had an understanding that if. Uh, mother or father or anyone got us gifts or candies or whatever and they were color coordinated everyone would get the color that they associate with and uh, I kind of use that memory to associate myself and instead of writing my name in uh, let in letters I write my name in a color my favorite color yellow Um, I kind of, yes, I, I do, it depends really, I've kind of shied away from it. Uh, my old paintings were primarily based on, on drawings where I'd plan everything. I mean, this, this painting on, on the right, I drew exactly that on Photoshop with colors, with everything, and then projected it on canvas and then just drew it in. Whereas with the painting on the left, I did not draw anything and just, and just painted the painting. Um, same happened with the one on the right, um, but then the one on the left is from a drawing. It's from bits of drawings which I make subconsciously when I'm in a lecture or when I'm on the tube or when I'm just sitting at home and doing nothing I, or watching something. I just like to, um, to doodle and jot down ideas and thoughts. And I take the few, element, few elements that I feel work together or like and kind of put them in, in one painting. But this has become much more interesting than the old paintings because there is some sort of um, conversation between motifs and shapes that exist in my sketchbook and then the motifs and shapes that come to life on the canvas. Um, I have a thing with dead artists. I like them more. That's one. Two, um, I don't really use artists to. I, I mostly use I mostly use referencing artists or studying or looking at artists' work, kind of like something I enjoy, something I something I like doing because. Um, I'm, I'm interested in uh, I'm interested in understanding the approach and, and why they do what they do, and um, and because of the the, the uh, that it, that they're ex aesthetically pleasing or whatnot. But I don't I try I try to prevent them from entering my work. Rather, so I do it. I like doing it. I like separating both. Even though there are tra there might be traces of other artists in my work. I try very much to shy away from it and kind of make a division between myself and uh, and everyone else. Artists I'm looking at currently, not to reference my work, but just for fun, are um, Monet, um, Twombly, uh, Bosch, Goya, and um, Turner, Rothko, those dudes. All dead. <laughs> um, and I, I thought it was uh, it was brilliant.
it so it kind of makes the uh, paucity of um, Kierkegaard, Nietzsche, Heidegger, Watts, and company, you know, with the a lightness of delivery and sense of humor. And, uh, yeah, it's my favorite man, Alan Watts. <coughs> yeah, I thought you were talking about the guy at the first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you said, Alan Watts. Yeah, that guy. That guy is, th is this one. Yeah. yeah, there he is. Yeah, now this one. It's my man. Suppress a little bit that element of critique, of cultural critique that was so in, in critique the commodity that was yeah. really present in, in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could have. Um, yes, that's true. I, I could have, you know, dissected this painting because this one kind of symbolizes and um, not symbolizes, but uh, um, kind of denotes all. The things that um, um, that I found around, you know, culture, how falconry is important because they're, these falcons are breeded and they're expensive and they're cooler than yours and money, palaces, gold. It's painted with petrol also. I forgot to say that uh, the smudgy thing on the back here is petrol before they raise the prices. It was cheap because of ISIS. They increased it by 0.6 percent. No, 60 percent. Mm. Yeah. I need that. I need that stuff. And I'm like, how do you like? I swear you were listening to Metallica when you made that. Like, that stuff needs to be in there. Like, uh, no, like, do you know what? I, it's like, yeah. Mm. Give me that stuff. Give me that info. That's good. You, you can you can have a special. Post talk session with Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I will. <laughs>